you guys and welcome to today's video i kind of want to switch this up a little bit and just like kind of talk you know have a conversation about fashion because today was the last day of the semester when i'm filming this and i'm just like re reflecting back on my favorite class which was fashion theory and it this class really made me think of like trends and like psychological factors that factor into trends way differently and i've just been really thinking about like how all of these theories i guess apply in like today's fashion world and i'm kind of thinking that trends are dead and i want to expand on my thoughts here so bear with me but one of my favorite quotes that i learned this year from fashion theory was that fashion is evolutionary rarely revolutionary which basically encapsulates the entire idea of the trend cycle it basically means that fashion will evolve over time and will rarely see styles pop up that are just completely different than the season before like for example jeans will start at low rise go to mid rise and to high rise super high rise and then once it hits that it'll go back down to high rise mid rise low rise and the cycle will continue but if you've been paying attention to like what's popular on pinterest or if you've watched any like trend prediction videos in the last year you may have noticed that multiple of like these steps in the trend cycle are simultaneously trending all at the same time like for example big chunky scarves are trending right now but at the same time skinny scarves are also trending and then also somehow mini midi and maxi skirts were all trending in the summer and then you could also argue that low-rise mid-rise and high-rise jeans are also all trending at the same time so there's just simply like so many trends and like why is this are trends dead well i mean like let's backtrack a little bit because if you've ever been into fashion history if you've ever watched those like through the years videos i think you know what i'm talking about you may have noticed that as the years progressed in like the 1900s the more i guess freely people dressed because like in the 1920s 30s 40s and even some of the 50s all the men in most of the women all kind of dressed the same and they all had like the t same expectations on how they dress. I mean, there was like a little bit of differentiation between like class, but even then lower classes just copied what higher classes were wearing. But through the 50s, we started to see an emergence of large like subcultures and i guess it's important to mention too that subcultures absolutely did exist before the 1950s but this was the first time where a subculture was big enough to be recognized in most mass media and what i mean by a fashion subculture is basically just a subculture but one that dictates how you dress and this comes from social identity theory, which was originally theorized by Taftel and Turner in 1979, so a long time ago. And that basically means that when you identify as part of a social group, they have certain rules to being in that social group, and they're kind of unspoken rules. And one of these rules is how you dress. My favorite example to think about when using this theory is 2014 Tumblr because if you were on Tumblr in 2014, you dress a certain way and you dress a certain way to make yourself recognizable. You were wearing black ripped skinny jeans with fishnets and a jean jacket and that meant that everyone knew you were on Tumblr. But anyways, in the 50s, we started to see a larger amount of people in like kind of like a rock and roll, you know, Greece type of subculture. And it dictated how they dressed. They wore leather, had certain hairstyles, owned motorcycles, and all these things identified them as part of that group. Then in the 60s, you had hippies, you had youth quakes, mod fashion and other rock subcultures still. And then a similar framework into the 70s and then the same in the 80s, except we started to see more fitness type subcultures. And then throughout these years, subcultures could be categorized basically into four categories, and that is rock, hippie, preppy, and sporty. Basically all the Spice Girls, if you really think about it. And all of these different like subculture areas had different clothing trends within them. So like preppy people wore tennis skirts, grunge people wore baggy jeans in the 90s. They all had their own trends. And as time progressed, from the 70s to the 90s. Technology also progressed like a lot. We saw an increase in subcultures because of this. For example, the 90s had many, many different rock type subcultures like grunge, scene, goth, and many more, but there was really, really an increase in subcultures in the early 2000s. The new millennium, okay, was the era of technology and introduced some of the biggest advancements, which included texting and especially social media. With the introduction to social media like MySpace in 2003 and Facebook in 2004, it meant that we would be seeing and interacting with so many more people. You could literally talk to anyone in the world at any time very quickly 
and very easily, which was something that we had never experienced before. And unfortunately though, you can't talk to everyone. So how did you refine who you talk to? Other than obviously the people that you knew or people in your area. Well, you interacted with people who shared the same interests as you because that's just the easiest way to group people when you don't know a whole lot about them. And what happens when we create groups of people based on interests? Subcultures. And so the 2000s had many subcultures because of this. They had the hipsters, the emos, the goth, scene, twee, chavs, literally so many more. And I'm sure there's so many that just like haven't been recorded on like a blog or website too. And then also the mass idea of clicks were really introduced in the 2000s. I mean, clicks 100% existed before, but they were so popular in mass media at the time. And overall, the 2000s was just a very segregated world. And then unfortunately, it only got worse. Um, as technology came, more subcultures also came about. Like think of all the different types of like little like subcultures that we had on Tumblr or like Instagram at the time. Like there was like groups of people for every celebrity, every TV show, every TV show's character, every song even. Like so many different like groups of people interacting on very specific interests and they dress a certain way like they own merch of that person and basically if you had a certain feed you dressed and acted a certain way that made it very recognizable who you were and then now here's the kicker you guys okay so the thing that really expanded like modern time subcultures was tiktok um and i know you don't want to hear this but now we are seeing so many people so many we are interacting with so many different accounts and ideas and we can interact with like six to ten different people in like a single minute which is absolutely insane and now we have such a need to define ourselves and label ourselves and social media perpetuates this with algorithms and even if you aren't trying to categorize or label yourself your algorithm's going to do it for you because of this change we've seen so many like niche aesthetics like coastal grandma downtown girl ballet core gorp core and like literally hundreds more and then tiktok's not the only one here at full either though current teens today us gen z people we've been relying on searchability our entire lives when you want to buy something you want you just have to search relative terms or categories in which it would be in and it'll come up if you want outfit inspiration on pinterest all you have to do is type in a bunch of keywords that categorizes the items or the look that you want and you're gonna find it we We've been subconsciously categorizing and labeling things our entire lives for the sake of searchability. And that's a lot of the reason why we may feel such a strong need to label ourselves. And to label anything really is just because we feel the need to have searchability. And of course, within all these different little aesthetics on TikTok, things trend. Like warmers were trending in ballet core. Linen pants were trending in coastal grandma. Uggs were trending in the clean girl aesthetic. Cargo pants were trending in or core, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So basically everything is trendy and nothing is really trendy all at once. So are trends dead? Well, like in my opinion, not really. I mean, I think that instead trends can just be thought of in an entirely different way. I mean, I don't think we really have the modern trend anymore where it's like you see it in a magazine and then everyone owns it within the next couple of months. And a YouTuber that I absolutely love, Lainey Ozark, made a video on online trends versus real life trends. And basically what the idea of this was is that things that you see influencers wearing online isn't what you're actually going to see people wearing day to day on the street. And this can be a differing opinion, but I think that the true trends, I guess, are the ones that we are seeing people wearing in real life. When I'm walking down the street, I see people in Uggs, I see people in puffer coats, I see garage tank tops, Doc Martens, Zara, wide leg jeans, um, and etc. And then when I'm online, I see a lot more difference in styles like cargo pants, I see a lot more kind of edgier looks, I see more unique styles, I guess. And I honestly say like, fuck it. Like, let's get rid of trends. Why do we need trends? Gone are the days of judging people for not wearing the most up-to-date stuff. And I think that this new era of real trends means that people are more inclined to develop personal style and dress how they really want. And honestly, if I think about it, all it really takes to see to be seen as fashionable is just to wear whatever the hell you want. If you experiment with clothes and you're confident in yourself, then you're fashionable. 
to be honest. I don't know about anyone else out there. It's very rare that I look at people and I judge them based on like their fashion style, I guess. So yeah, basically, too long don't read. People need to label themselves differently. And once the internet emerged, you really, really need to label yourself. And this created small groups of people. And these small groups of people had fashion trends within them to the point where kind of everything is just trending because there's so many different little groups with different little trends. And they kind of all bleed into each other at the, in the end. I think that trends should just be thought of it in a whole new light. What is a trend? Does the trend cycle exist even? Do we still need to follow trends? But like, what does this mean for the future of fashion? I don't really know. But yeah, I guess that's it. I would love to hear your thoughts on the subject. I mean, trends are like a really relevant subject. They've been around forever and it's kind of like weird to think about that trends are kind of ending. Fashion is ending. But yeah, I guess that's today's video. Well, yeah. So like this video and subscribe because I want to make a lot more videos like this. I really like just sitting down and talking about things like it's so refreshing but also let me know your thoughts on the subject because i would love to know i love to hear everyone's perspective so shoot me a comment down below and i guess i will see you guys next time